and there was moves that could have been made, sliding up to get Tremaine Edmonds, which Buffalo did. I think was aggressive and strong, and I wish the Lions had done it. If they'd stayed there, I would have taken Rashawn Evans, the linebacker from Alabama, the way the board fell. And Leighton Vander Esch, who went the pick before. Oh, do you the, like Vander Esch? The pick before. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Did Ken, you texted us last night something Brett Bielema said. Brett Bielema coached, uh, obviously, Frank Ragnow at Arkansas and said this, according to the broadcast, he's the best offensive lineman he's coached, and he coached Joe Thomas. Does that make you feel better, Doug? Not particularly. <laughs> Different position, but it speaks to maybe I how mean, highly he feels about Frank uh, Ragnow. Um, I don't when, know if it's going to translate to the NFL. When and where did he NFL. say that? When and where did he say that? Uh, he said know? to uh, – one of the guys up on the stage last night. I just wonder if he said it to teams as well. When teams came in and asked about Frank, right, basically gave they the, the, the professional reference. When they went to him for a reference, did he say that? Yeah, or he is could this, have said that for sure. Or well, he definitely just, said it to the Lions. If he, <laughs> yeah. All right. Two, Who's four, buying this? Who's buying this? Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Let's get to your phone calls. David in Brighton. Hi, David. I just wonder if I David, keep your radio down. I just said, uh, Good. What's up? All right, so I'm a little, um, so I'm offended, but a little livid. Okay, last year, we did not get our running back. We have the three, so we give up the less yards for our running, we have the worst running game in the league, and you say don't get a running back. Yeah, don't get him in the first round, but get one, definitely. You got blunt, you know, because you threw one or whatnot. We need a running back. Not a center. We need a running back. So how could we, you know, we lose a lot, a lot of rounds to be picked, when you get a running back? Well, um, through the authentic frontier gibberish there, I, I, I think I would have uh, I wouldn't have taken a, a center in the first round, and, and I kind of agree with Doug on this one. Now that you have, I wouldn't take a running back in the second round. I, I wouldn't. I, I, I think you, you can't afford to let the resource of, of a top defensive player slip you by in the second round when you have to add to the defense. I still want to take a running back. I mean, Doug and I might differ on that. But I'm willing to wait till the fifth round to take one. I, I my dream of Rashad Penny's gone. He went in the first round, and then in the second round, okay. I mean, even if Nick Chubb is there for the Lions in the second round, I'm probably going to pass on Chubb, assuming that one of these defensive players I covet would be there. I, I don't take a running back now because if this center is as good as they to to justify this pick, be like, oh, our run game problems are solved. Run game problems are solved. We got the center. Well, I'll tell you what. From day one, who the Lions open up the season with? The uh, the Jets? Yep. The Lions, uh, let, let's hope Amir Abdullah runs for over 100, gets rid of that stupid streak we keep hearing about, and we can all feel better about the running game. I right? almost feel like that's a that's now a requirement. Like the, the, whatever, the Lions as a team have to run for like 150 yards plus in three of the first four games and to make me Stafford feel good about it. And get touched like once. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Terry and Ipsy. Hi, Terry. Hi, guys. Um, I going into the draft. The center was the position I was. The, was my first or second choice. My I, defensive. The one of them, one of those really good linebackers. You guys had been talking about previous shows. I apologize for not remembering names, but I would have liked to have been able to grab that. However, ever since Rayola left the team. I felt the weakest part of the offensive line was the center. Now, what caught my attention about this particular pick was they they mentioned it last night that he had not given up a sack, a quarterback sack in his career at Arkansas. That's an amazing statistic seeing that they're playing in the Southeast Conference. And the second thing was, uh, this morning I heard an interview with, I guess the guy's name was Kurt Anderson, who was a former Michigan player who was was also his offensive coach. And in that interview, they talked about the fact that he had a number of teams, like six or seven teams, inquire about him. And he was positive that Cincinnati would have picked him if uh, the Lions had I know, that, I know that that's out there. I don't. I personally don't buy it. But oh boy, I, I don't. Well, I, I honestly, I honestly think that that has been the weakest part of our offensive line, and um, we really need to get a good leader in the center position. 
And one of the other statistics about the guy that I like is they talked about the fact that he has the ability to pull from the center position. He has enough speed that he can get out and block on a play and pull out and get a block on a safety for a running back on like an outside play. That's an impressive. Yeah, you can play center or guard. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Steve in Heartland, you're next. Hi, Steve. How you guys doing? Um, real quick, I don't have a lot of time. Obviously, you don't either for me. But the thing of it is, I don't think it's a glamorous pick, but I love the pick, and I'll tell you the reason why. The, the thing of it is, I was looking towards running back and line defense alignment, or I, the name escapes me, that guy that um, – can play linebacker and defensive, and I don't know. But I'm going to get back to the pick. The thing that I like about the pick is this. If the Lions believe it, I never really heard of this guy. I did a little research. Not only can he play guard and center, and I actually agree with your previous caller, when we can protect Stafford more, we don't know what Abdullah can do. we got some more picks to take yet. When we solidify the offensive line, all these games are won on the offensive line and the defensive line. That's my opinion of football. We get all the glamour with, you know, interceptions and wide receivers and whatnot. I think it's overall at 20th, and the last comment is that you guys say, well, they could have picked up for, to trade it up to 15th. We don't, aren't privy to all that information exactly. Now, Probably, yes, but whatever. I think overall, it's a good pick. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. None of us here approve of the pick, but so far most of the listeners do. Let's go to Ray in Commerce. You're next. Hi, Ray. Hey, Doug. Um, I, I think that I want to take it back off that last caller. I really approve of the pick. You know, when I saw it on the TV last night and, you know, Ragnow comes across the screen, you know, you had all this excitement thinking it's going to be a defensive player and it ended up being a center and you just had nowhere to go with that energy. And so, you know, although I think that, you know, if the uh, pick is, you know, kind of safe, you know, which is what we expect, I mean, it's like you're saying that, you don't expect Matt Patricia and the defensive coordinator to be able to coach up the defense. Given well, the that's life, what we're now expected players. to believe, Ray. I mean, honestly, uh, they've there's a few things that now we're expected to believe. They didn't draft Ziggy Ansah's replacement with a first round pick, so we're I expect to believe now that they're going to sign Ziggy Ansah long term. I'm expected to believe that Matt Patricia's approved Matt Patricia's uh, being the head coach alone is going to make this defense better. And you know, I I. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that's completely crazy, but I usually am more worried about the Jimmys and Joes than the X's and O's. And I, oh. I think you do it with great players more than you do it with great coaching. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see if they can uh, find some diamonds in the rough in the rest of this draft, and we'll see if Patricia can coach up what they already have. Uh, a part, of the, part of my frustration is, if, if they, do they need a center or a guard and moving Glasgow to center? Yes. Yes. And a guy that was ready to start was something that I thought was was very big for them to address in free agency. I know the Lions have a philosophy, it seems like, building inside out, right? Building in the trenches. And they're sticking with that, which is fine. Do you think any of it had to do with reactionary to what Green Bay did with getting Muhammad Wilkerson and what the Minnesota oh, a guy Vikings the Lions did? didn't sign? And what the Vikings did with Sheldon Richardson. Oh, a guy the Lions didn't sign? Mm-hmm. Two defensive tackles in the division that are signed by the uh, you know your rivals. It's possible. Because those Possible. guys are coming up the middle. You got to get strong. You know, up the and middle, they also right? could have signed those guys. Well, right. maybe they don't want to come here. <laughs> I suppose. I'm trying to help, Gator. It's, it's not working well. I, I just I want to see Doug explode. You know, if they would have lost that Green Bay game at the end of the season, they would have uh, had the 16th pick and they could have just drafted Tremaine Edmonds. Oh, is that what would have worked out? Yeah. Th- this is getting better and better. 97 1 the ticket.